every once in a while, God will show up in these dimensions. Those under the anointing, just help them, just keep them somewhere quiet. Hallelujah. A few minutes with us tonight, and then we will pray. I want to encourage everyone to continue to press towards the things of God. Um, it's very easy to be distracted in this kingdom. It's very easy to lose focus, to major on the minors. Let's settle down, please, those inside, outside, and minor on the majors. But God brings us here to help us even by his spirit. I want to share with you something very briefly that I believe is very powerful and very instructive and then we'll have the opportunity to pray. If you're with me, please say Amen. It's a revelation that God put in my heart. It's for Koinonia, but then it's for the body of Christ. And I believe that the Lord will help us tonight. Why prophecies fail? Please write. And let's discuss within a few minutes a very powerful understanding that God gave me. Why prophecies fail? First Timothy chapter 1, please. And verse 18. Believers continue to struggle with the tragedy of unfulfilled, please listen, please listen, unfulfilled prophecies. Praise the Lord. The Lord is speaking to someone in overflow one, it will not happen as you have seen. I don't know what I'm saying, but the Lord is just asking me to speak it just like that. It will not happen as you have seen. I believe that tonight's um, message may be why the anointing is moving in this dimension. It will not happen as you have seen. It will not happen as you have seen. It will not happen as you have seen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So many believers continue to battle with unfulfilled prophecies. Here and there, men and women of God all over the world continue to speak the counsel of God, the word of God to individuals. But then we notice that people receive these prophecies. And most, now let me tell you sincerely, most of the prophecies we receive never come to pass. And tonight is an attempt to very quickly show us what may be wrong. And then also to reveal to us the place of the prophetic. Listen very carefully. And the place of the word of God. Because there are people, for instance, who have seen things in visions, in dreams, or have received prophetic words from anointed people, genuine people, filled with the Holy Spirit. And these prophecies may not have been consistent with the dealings of God. Some of them may have been negative prophecies. And they have remained helpless, believing that just because a man anointed by God, accredited by God, made a pronouncement, an utterance to them, it meant that nothing could be done about it and then they sit down and allow those prophecies to happen. So we are dealing with the prophetic today. And I pray that God will grant us understanding. So let's go very quickly. Our time is gone. Read with me verse 18. Everyone want to read. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. Uh -huh, according to the prophecies which went before on thee. That thou... War a good warfare. Stop there. Paul is speaking to his son in the gospel, Timothy. And he's saying that some prophecies were released to go ahead of you. Now, understand what he's saying. 
he's encouraging him. He's saying, Mr. Man, be assured of this. That we have released prophetic words to go ahead of you. But he tells him that by them, those prophecies that have gone ahead of you, you will war a good warfare. Hallelujah. So it is possible that prophetic words can be sent ahead of a person. Please listen very carefully. Whether in ministry, in family life, business, career, whatever it is, that the prophetic is real. Now, let me balance this up front, even before we continue our discussion. There are people here and there who, probably because of their religious affiliations, their denominations, or the kind and the structure of mentorship they may have received, may have been trained by well-meaning, sincere men and women of God to ignore or despise the prophetic, to despise prophecy. We find people, some persons have been very vocal about the fact that the prophetic is not useful in today's church and all versions of sarcasm has been communicated as regards the prophetic. The Bible says very clearly, and I think that I will just um, solve that once and for all. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20, let the word of God speak once and for all. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20. If you're a Christian, please read with me. One, two, read. Despise not prophesying. One more time. This is a warning. Do not despise prophesying. Do not despise the place of the prophetic in your journey to knowing God and living a meaningful life. That means that the Bible recognizes that there is a place for the prophetic. Okay? So we establish that up front, that there is a place for the prophetic. And the Bible says to not despise it. That means that if you find yourself in an environment where yourself or the leaders around you continue to despise prophesying, you don't have to fight anybody, you don't have to create trouble, but let it be a settled conviction within you that in the journey of a believer, there is a place, listen carefully, there is a place for the prophetic. There is a place for prophesying. Are we together? When it comes to the prophetic, the Bible lets us know that even scripture is prophecy. Do you agree with me? Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19, please. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. It says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. When you read in context coming down, you will know that he was speaking about scripture as a more sure word of prophecy. It says, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. Now listen very carefully. So he's telling you that there are prophesyings that have to do with the speakings of men under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Are we together? He's telling you that there is another kind of prophesying that is the revelation as captured in Scripture. He says to also take heed as well. So do not despise the prophesyings that has to do with the speakings of men. And that you do not despise the prophesying that has to do with the authority of Scripture. The prophecy of Scripture, we call it. Are we together now? Yes. The character of these two dimensions of prophetic operations are not the same. Please listen very, very carefully. So the Bible is prophetic. The words that are written in scripture are prophetic. The words that are spoken by a man under the influence of the Spirit of God to you, real time, is also prophetic. But in terms of superiority, please listen, 
They are not all the same. Although engineered by the Spirit of God. The Bible lets us know, please look at me, that the prophecy of Scripture and the prophecy that comes from a vessel, they are all together to the edifying of the saints, but they do not hold the same weight in the Spirit. You have to learn this. The word more sure means more reliable, more dependable. Are we together? It attempts to show you the excellency of the prophecy of Scripture. That means that if given an option for both of them, the Bible gives you its recommendation. In terms of reliability and certainty, it tells you to depend on the prophecy that comes from Scripture. Are we together? There are many reasons for this, and that's, that's, not, that's not where I'm going tonight. My goal is to show you why prophecies fail and then to connect a few things and we'll pray. The Bible in many expressions tells us that Scripture has been tried seven times. The word seven there means complete. That the truths of Scripture have been vetted again and again and has been found reliable. Listen, the Bible is not the only book that contains Pieces of the wisdom of God. Listen carefully. Here and there, God has dealt with people. Here and there, different religions have tapped into the wisdom of God through the understanding of His principles. And they have captured details that are consistent with God's operation. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Chances are that you can pick a book that is non-Christian. You can pick any religious book on earth and read it and you will find communications that are consistent with the way God would have spoken and how God would have acted. And the results, even in those books, show you that the agency that supplied that result was not of the devil. It's not an endorsement to the books. The advantage of the Bible is that as a singular compendium, it contains the wisest perspective in all matters. Are we together now? Listen very carefully now. It contains the wisest perspective. Why? Because they are God's opinion. Among all of the books that have been arranged for the edification of man, the Bible, as a compendium of 66 books, has been recommended by the Spirit of God that it can guide men to know God. It can guide men to become victorious. When you study theology, you will find out that there are many other books. They are generally called extra-biblical texts. There is what we call the Annals of the King. There's what we call the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's what we call the Books of Jasha. All of these books are extra-biblical materials that were written. Are we together now? But then in the wisdom of God and through his predeterminate counsel, he has found out that the truth contained in this compendium we call the Bible is sufficient to be the limit of the jurisdiction of your knowing God. You will find many books that contain certain information that may not be captured here. And God is telling you within the context of your civilization, any knowledge about me that is not in this volume is not required for life and godliness in as much as you are working with me is concerned. So the Bible becomes the coordinates, if you allow me to use that word, the Bible becomes the defining jurisdiction for your knowing God. Listen very carefully. I'm showing you the reasons why the word of God is called a more sure word of prophecy. God has vetted the truth here and found out that any believer that settles with scripture as contained in this book under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there is no dimension of God required for your knowledge that the truth here, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, cannot bring you into. So it's called the most sure word. 
It has predicted your life already. More than any man can predict. More than any man can prophesy. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? The vessel that speaks to you is limited by many factors. Number one, the accuracy of his or her perception. Number two, the accuracy of his or her interpretation. Number three, the atmosphere that became the influence upon which he spoke. Are we together? Number four, the level of renewal of that vessel as at the time he spoke. All of these are factors all together that can interrupt the purity and the quality of the speakings. It doesn't mean the person is fake. These are the things that water down the efficacy of the prophetic. Are we together? And then the mental development of that prophet or that speaker also matters. Chances are that if naturally speaking, I'm a person that detests excellence. If God is giving me a prophetic word that relates to excellence, my, my prior fortitude for trivializing excellence will make that prophetic word not come with the gravity with which it left heaven. Because in my person, I don't find excellence to be something that is needed. If I'm someone, for instance, who does not believe finance and prosperity is useful, are we together? If a prophetic word comes that God is going to make Sam a millionaire, remember I've trained myself to be embarrassed to even talk of millionaire because I've interpreted it as carnality. Chances are that I would just say you are going to be blessed. You see that now. So the efficacy of that prophetic word was corrupted by the limitation of my spiritual understanding. But then let's assume, for instance, that I was accurate enough to deliver it, to be fair enough, and you now receive it. Now, remember, I'm not fake. Remember, I'm anointed. Remember, you too, you are not fake. You see that now? Yes. The giver and the believer have to be real for it to work. So, we agree that two of us are not fake. Are we together? And now you receive that word. And then... It never comes to pass. And you go back to God and say, Lord, what happened? I got a prophetic word by a man of God. And according to the word he said by June, I will have a car. Remember he called my name, it was accurate. He called the name of my wife, it was accurate. Every other detail was accurate. So it supported my believing him. Yet it did not happen. I even fell down, you can add it, and it didn't happen. He prophesied to me that as I return back, my ministry will expand. He described in detail my ministry. Called the name. Called everything. I went back and after five years were worse than even before I came for that consultation. What is the reason? Why do prophecies fail? This is a question that even men of God, apostles and prophets themselves, have not seemed to find an answer to. So usually, as men, the obvious answer is to transfer blames. So I come to you and I say, it has to be your fault. You didn't have faith. You didn't believe me. My track record is there to show. And then the other person says, well, I may have my track record, but I don't know what happened to you at the time you are speaking to me. I know that it was not God. And then we read scriptures like God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Are we together now? When you read these scriptures, it further confuses you because you are now looking and saying, that means that it is within God's power to bring his word to pass. The reason why many people are confused over spiritual things is because we don't read our Bibles. We listen to people but we don't study scripture. We do morning devotions. We listen to messages online, profitable and wonderful. But we don't stay with scripture for the purpose of building understanding, building conviction. So most of our convictions are outsourced and borrowed. 
our convictions are hardly intrinsic. Something that came as a result of a revelation given by God. Most of our convictions are outsourced. We borrow the confidence of someone we respect. Just because the person said, this is it. We say, this is it too. Why do prophecies fail? Hallelujah. Are we blessed? So many people have relaxed and crossed their legs. So many people have even written the prophetic words that were spoken unto them. Barren women have received prophecies. You will have a child. And it's five years gone. No child. Sick people in the hospital receive prophetic words. Do you have a loved one in the hospital? Yes, sir. Is he sick? Yes, sir. About to die? Yes, sir. Thus saith the Lord, he shall not die. Isaiah 38. Mighty God, we give you praise. Give us understanding and be glorified. Isaiah chapter 38. Mm. In those days, look up please, was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah the what? The son of Amos came unto him and said, help me read, Thus saith the Lord. Stop there. So we agreed that it was not the speakings of Isaiah. Thus saith who? The Lord. Set thy house in order. Why? For thou shalt die and not live. Don't call anybody fake again because the prophecy is negative. Who spoke negative here? Thus say it who now? Talk to me. I mean, we're Christians. Don't just begin to... The man was a vessel. I brought you Jumia package. You opened it and saw a gun. And you are... Rest. No, you, you don't. I, I was sent. I'm a messenger. Thus say it the Lord. Set your house in order. He says, for thou shalt die. Who are you going to beg? Who will you beg to help you beg God? That God sends a prophet and he speaks. Put your house in order. You are going to die. Verse 2. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto who? <laughs> he turned and prayed unto the Lord. Verse 3. And said, Remember now O oh Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. And with a perfect heart, and I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept so. Verse 4. Then, then, hold on. The first time he said, Thus saith the Lord. Now he's saying, The word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Verse 5 Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Listen. What was wrong, O oh God, with your understanding? Couldn't you see the end from the beginning again? You sent a prophet with your reputation on him. And within minutes, prophecies changed. This is a discussion between God and a man. A man goes to God and says, God, what did I hear that you said? You said, I'm going to die. Let me do something to you that will make you change your own word. 
Please listen. I have added now 15 days to your, to your years, verse 6. And I will deliver thee and this city from the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. Next verse. We are reading to verse 8. And this shall be a sign from the Lord that what you now hear is more superior than what you had before. Because the both for and against me came from God. So why, which one should I believe? Remember, thus saith the Lord before came from God. Thus saith the Lord now also came from God. You have kept me in limbo. And God is saying, I will give you a sign. To show you which is superior. Please go back. Verse 7. Verse 7. That the Lord will do this thing that he has spoken. Which one? Which one didn't he speak? Verse 8. Behold... I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which is gone down in the sun, this and that and that, backwards. So the sun returned 10 degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. He gave him a sign. So by the time the guy saw the sun going down, he said, ah, this sign was tied to the second prophecy. And based on it, I know now, and I have confidence, that something I have done, has made God to override the first prophecy. There is now, let me tell you some interesting things here. Number one, God never admitted he made a mistake. So it was not a mistake. God is, ah, oh, sorry, is it you? Uh, 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 Isaiah, you know how busy I am. I have to speak to this and that. No. God acted as if he didn't talk before. L- listen to this. He would have said, okay, go back and say, it's okay, it's okay. No, you don't need to cry. I'm God. Am I still not your father? He just changed as if he's not the one. Imagine if you were that prophet. It's as if God just denied you now and left you in trouble. Imagine if Isaiah came to your church. If um, who? Hezekiah came to your church. Miracle service. And you now prophesied. And said, this is what I see. Oh. The same way it moves from positive to negative. I can also stand in the name of the Lord and prophesy to you that by next week, five of you will be in America. And by next week, one person is in jail. The other person is in the hospital. And you will come back and say, Mr. Man, come and arrest this man because he is fake. Between the first prophecy and the second prophecy, man did something. Listen to me very carefully. Between the first speaking of God and what he changed, man did something. That means between a positive prophecy and a negative one that happens, there is man in between that does something that can turn prophecy. Please listen to me and learn this. All personal prophecies, write it down please. All personal prophecies spoken by any servant of God. All. All personal prophecies spoken by any servant of God have conditions that must be adhered to for their actualization. All prophecies. There is no prophecy spoken by any man of God on earth that happens on his own. Are we together? Listen. The prophecy of Scripture is a revelation. Of the preset principles of God that has already been attached to his speakings. Notice, notice how the construction of scripture is. For every speaking of God, there is a condition. Are you seeing that now? 
The moment you satisfy that condition, there are some of them you don't even have to pray. The moment you satisfy that condition, it happens. Are we together now? Look at this. I don't need to speak to your ground, your farm, and say in the name of Jesus, except I'm not a man of God. Corn, you must come out this year. No. Already a word had been sent while the earth remains. Seed time and harvest. That means if I never sow, I will not know whether that word is still valid or not. So my sowing gives the word an opportunity to prove itself. And then it grows. That the word of God is more sure because already for everything God says, the principle to actualize it has been added. As a man of God, I can receive prophecy for you and not be able to be aligned enough to receive the principle that makes that prophecy come to pass. I can tell you God is going to lift you, but the limitation of my prophetic reception does not allow me to tell you what you must do to make that prophecy come to pass. So I just tell you, this is what I see. You are great. The word of God says, this is what you must do. You are great too. Choose which of the two. That if you never meet a physical man who speaks to you, you can go to Jesus the prophet. I am the way, the truth, and life. Jesus the prophet. And look at a scripture and lift that scripture as Jesus speaking to you and say, Jesus, I hear you. I've heard you say to me that it shall come to pass if I diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and do all that you command me this day, that you will set me on high above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon me and overtake me. There is no witch in hell. Hear me? If you prophesy to me and say, Apostle, I see failure. You are not wrong. But I, have, I know that there is a much forward of prophecy. For as long as I walk in keeping with what Jesus the prophet said, there is no divination and there is no enchantment from the pit of hell that can override the authority. In the state of authority, the prophecy of scripture stands superior to any human prophecy. Men of God and women of God are gradually pushing prophecy outside of the jurisdiction of its relevance. And members are today becoming slaves to men and women of God. A man seems to be able to own the souls of people because you can just speak to anybody anyhow. And they go back saying, this one has spoken. Apostle Joshua Stelman has spoken. No. Prophecies can fail to the negative or to the positive. I can speak to you and say, God will bless you. You will eat well. Don't obey the principles of scripture that make for increase and you will be surprised. When men say there is a casting down, you will join them and say there is a casting down. Why? Because you violated the principle. There is no truth of scripture. Salvation is the freest thing we know. And the condition is that if thou shalt believe with thy heart, talk to me koinonia, and thou shalt confess with your mouth, that means you can stand around a preacher and he can preach a powerful sermon and you will still go to hell. You had the word, but you still went to hell. This action part, this condition part, is why many prophecies fail. The prophet spoke in scripture that a virgin shall be with child. He didn't say a virgin called Mary. He said a virgin. There were many women who qualified for that prophecy. But one woman aligned herself enough. So the angel came to say, Madam, we have found you favored. And I've taught you that favor does not happen automatically. Mary was understudied from heaven. 
There were many other ladies, but heaven looked at Mary. Does she sustain? Please help them. Does she sustain the character? Will Mary be able to stand the embarrassment of getting pregnant from a ghost? The way Mary is, if pressure is too much, are you sure she's not going to corner Joseph and run away? Is this woman, is she liable to receiving a bribe from a rabbi? Mary was not just favored, she was studied. Her alignment was making her partner with prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then the angel came back and said, Mary, we have found you favored. And the favor is that based on our examination, you are the most fit person among the virgins here to carry Jesus. She said, well, um, I don't want to abort prophecy. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. And then the angel explained that, okay, this is what will happen. You will not need to meet a man. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. Your stomach will just start bulging out. Don't find it strange. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't worry. It's okay. And she said, be it unto me. Be the word unto me. I receive the word. Be it unto me according to your word. Mary would have sat down and said, no, this deal is not fair. The ghost has to come with you and explain to me. And let me understand, if I see him and I think he's really a spirit and that, do you know it would have delayed the birth of Jesus? Heaven would have had to now go back and start looking for another person again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. So God has spoken great things over our lives. Many of us received the word. We didn't receive the conditions. We left the conditions on the ground. When we fell down, we got up, we received the word. But we left the conditions. As a result, our lives are a shadow of what God said should be. Because we received the word, but did not receive the conditions. The angel comes and tells Joshua that this city will be defeated. But then he gives him the conditions immediately. And demands that the conditions be adhered to in total. So he began to go around Jericho once every day. The seventh day he went seven times and they shouted. And prophecy came to pass. There is no prophecy that happens on its own. There are few prophecies in the Bible that are called written judgments. There are verdicts already that have been declared. One of it is the eternal doom of Lucifer. There is no prayer retreat that will happen to beg God to change his mind about the condition of Satan. So if you have a dream and you see Satan coming back in heaven to join the seraphs, you know straight off that you are under attack. Because based on the truth of scripture written, it's a written judgment. Are we together? Another written judgment. The eternal doom of those who reject Christ. The Antichrist and his cohort. These things are written. The only thing you can do is to exempt yourself from it. But you cannot stop it. Number three. The reality of curses and yokes on earth is written. Ordinances were intentionally put. The only thing you can... You can't stop curses on the earth. No, they are there. The only thing you can do is exempt yourself from it. You can say minus me and my family. But to say minus it out of the earth, no sir, it is not given to you. You can cast out demons from your life, from a church, from your vicinity, but not from the earth. There is nobody who will stand and gather all the demons on earth because he said, I behold, I give you power. Remember scripture, power. So I have that authority, I've been risen with Christ above all thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. You gather all the demons in one place, catch them, and let there be peace on earth. No, that does not happen. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. 
the number one reason why prophecies do not come to pass is because people receive the word but do not receive the condition. The condition for actualizing the prophecies. The other side of this is that you can change any prophecy. Write it down, please. Don't let anybody tell you there are prophetic words that will not change and cannot change. That is against the character of Scripture. The Bible shows us again and again that it is within the power of a believer to change prophecies. That means if your father looks at you and says you are cursed, you are a foolish and stupid son. I know a woman, years ago when I was in secondary school, there was a woman who was tired of her son stealing. She will make her little money and this naughty boy will come and carry, continue to fish the money out of the, the mother's wallet. And one day she was angry and she looked at him and cursed him. She said he will stop stealing only when rats stop stealing. Let me tell you, this guy, as soon as he's going out of the cell, he won't reach two weeks, he's back again. They know him, they just open the door, there's nothing to ask. What happened? Mm -mm. Just walk in, we know. Do you think that boy does not have a way out. Imagine that that boy is in a place where he never meets a man who can speak to him. Is there hope for that boy? Yes, sir. There is Jesus the prophet. That he can look at it. That even the lawful captives. Is it in your Bible? A more sure word of prophecy. Even the lawful captives can be delivered. So you can find this truth. And believe it. But you just get up and say, wow, I found it. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. I'm delivered. Hallelujah. You are not delivered. <coughs> you are only informed about deliverance that is possible. Are you seeing how we mock ourselves? We just find it out. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm done. And right after then, you will see what they say should happen. Happen. There are conditions. What made the captive lawfully captive? And what is the condition for that person to be delivered? The biggest hit of this prophetic inaccuracy is in the area of financial prosperity. Many poor people in the church today, the years they have spent waiting for prophecy is the same time they would have activated the blessings of God upon their lives. They have sat down lazily and carelessly and some foolishly waiting for a prophetic word by an accurate man. And members continue to harass men of God around and say, you have spoken, it's not working. I bless you. I bless you. You are correct. But you go and read and study everything the Bible says about the blessing. How it works. And how it is activated. And you'll find out that many people are hoping in futility. It's true. Charismatics. This is where charismatics have failed. The excitement that comes with revelation has swallowed up the need for compliance. People just jump here and there. Things will happen. He shall keep the imperfect peace. Yes. And no evil shall come nigh thy dwelling. You go and look for trouble and see what happens. It will look as if angels are no longer there. So what happens? I, I, I get what I'm saying now. Yes. You can choose to end your life now, today, right now. You go and stand, you go and stand on the road. Let me be prophesying. In Jesus' name you will live long. I stand under the oil God has given me. While you stroll foolishly, you use your will that is more powerful. That's the same will that brought Jesus into your heart. Jesus stood at the gate of your heart and would not enter until that will let him in. And you stand in front of a door and a truck. The spirit of death is an opportunist. He looks for a scenario that makes his ministry possible. So he's scouting around Zaria. And here he finds someone about to stand near a T-junction. Carelessly. He will heighten the drunkenness of the driver. And with speed, he will not see you. He will come and clear you. You are dead. 
Now, resurrection is a different law altogether. We can now start, but as far as that seed is concerned, you are dead. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something that happened to a young man. I'm sure he may be listening or maybe he's here. It's a big mistake that the boy made. He had some carryovers and um, he saw me in a dream, according to him. I appeared in a dream and I told him, I said, everything is all right. Now, watch this now. Everything is all right. Very consistent with what God will say. Are we together? The same way God looks at the poor and says, let the poor say, I am rich. They said, I am rich till they became old. Nothing happened. And then the gentleman got up and didn't even do anything. He refused to take the carryovers, refused to do anything, and he just sat there and he called me and was sending text messages and was telling me, look, I'm not trying to jeer the gentleman, no, not at all. I'm just trying to use it to correct. Now, you see, that word was at the mercy of a condition. Are we together now? Is it not when your lecturer sees your script? Now, you have done your own part to at least write. The Spirit of God can now move upon that man to show you mercy. Mercy is not possible now because the condition to activate the mercy was not granted. The same way the Bible says that you will build houses and you keep looking at your land, that house will not be built. Someone will look at you and say, speak to me. Say, I, I, the same thing I told you last year is what God is showing me again. The day you take a step of faith and you buy sharp sand, one tipper, and pour there by faith, what happens? That's your five loaf and two fish. You are ready for a miracle. A destiny helper can now come and say, what's going on here? Say, I'm, I'm starting life. I'm pushing this thing by faith. Say, really, come to my office tomorrow. Now, your obedience has allowed prophecy to find expression. Are we together? Yes. Your marriage shall be a blessing. Your children surround your table. You will see your children's children. You are a bad gentleman and you are a bad lady. God will never, that prophecy will never come to pass. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are many guys that just cross their legs. I saw myself, I saw my children, I saw a jeep here, I saw a resort center here. You are dreaming. Let me tell you this. Prophecy will never come to pass because God demands diligence and productivity for wealth to happen. You have ignored that law. And so that prophecy will never come to pass. Are we together? Your marriage will be a blessing if you know what it takes for a husband and a wife to live together. If the only thing you take to your marriage is prophecy, you are in trouble. You must take understanding. You must take what? Understanding. So that when your wife shouts and says, I hate you, I hate you, I hate the day I married you, you just know that she doesn't mean what she's saying. If you carry that, that straight line, prophetic thinking and slap her, that's the end of that marriage. In spite of the fact that the Bible says you will see your children's children. Prophecies can fail. When men do not satisfy the conditions that make for the actualization of that prophecy, it will fail. The same way negative prophecies can be averted. I've told you, I've said this with you once and again, that people continue, you know, here and there, people can have dreams about me over trips that I'm taking, whether by road or by air, and they can send a text and say, Apostle, I got up, I saw a very dangerous dream. Very dangerous dream. And this is it, and I saw a ghastly motor accident, or I saw a plane crash, and you are there. Now, they are not fake, truly. It may be that that's the plot of the enemy. It would be stupid for me to think Satan is going on break for me. No. There are many people who think the devil is attacking them. The devil is not attacking them. Do you know what it takes for Satan to attack you? You to be honest, if you were Satan, will you attack everybody? It's not strategic. What have you done that justifies being attacked? The level of investment you think Satan is making on you is, is, is flattery. Most of what we are getting is the inertia of prophecy. Just sitting on your life and not moving. 
because you have refused to do something about it. Take Satan out of the earth. People's condition will only improve a little. Only do what? Improve a little. You will be surprised. You will think if Satan is taken out of the earth, suddenly the poor will be rich. Suddenly. You, in fact, let me tell you, there are many people who the, God uses the way the devil pushes them to help them understand God. You will be surprised to see that some people's situation will be worse when Satan is out. Because there's no basis for pain again to bring conviction. Some of you right now are sitting down waiting for prophecies to happen by themselves. Some of our parents received prophecies since 1980, 1970 till today. That prophecy has not come to pass. And we continue to carry disappointment in our hearts. I am showing you right now, listen very carefully, that more than the speakings of any man, you must find a place. There are many men of God who people will look and say, I see a grace on you. Somebody has told me before, confirmation. I see that you will be a powerful man of God. Yes, sir. I'm seeing like Reinhard Bonke. I see Reinhard Bonke. The other one said that. You will never be like Reinhard. Do you know what Reinhard Bonke did to be Reinhard Bonke? Talk about the times of prayer. Talk about the times of fasting. Listen to me. Talk about the times of engaging the word. Talk about the disciplines that it takes to host God's power. You ignore that there is no Reinhard Bonke for you. The worst, in fact, let me even take it a step further before we pray. The worst one is that hands were laid on you when prophecies came. And you just believe that because hands were laid and I fell down. I got up with conditions satisfied automatically. No, you were engraced by that falling. The real anointing for the result has not yet been given. That anointing for the result is waiting when your obedience is complete. That's when it comes on you. The anointing you received, I'm telling you, is the grace to work in keeping with the conditions that bring that prophecy. Are we together? It's a simple message, but it will work wonders in your life. You will call your brother very quickly and say, sir, please come. I already know that this is your journey is heading nowhere. Just sit down. Let us discuss. Why is this family like this? He said, don't worry. Prophecy just came last week. And you will know who to drive away from your house respectfully. By the time he comes again, singing all kinds of songs and saying, it does not work, Abi, let's walk again. Bring 200,000. Bring one chicken. Bring one bag of rice and then success will imaginarily happen. No, sir. Whether a man is fake or real, the result in your life will be the same if you don't engage. Did you hear what I said? Whether a prophet is fake or a prophet is real, once there is no engaging the conditions that make for actualizing that prophecy, your result, I guarantee you, will be the same. It's why many people don't go to church. They went to a herbalist and the herbalist prophesied to them. And then they got born again and went to a real man of God. He prophesied to them. The result was the same. Zero. And they said, I don't, there's no difference. There will not be difference because the defining factor is not God, not the prophets, but you, the recipient of that prophecy. If God tells you you are going to marry a multi-millionaire, what are you supposed to do? Thanksgiving. Yes, Thanksgiving. But what, what do you do else where you finish Thanksgiving? You go back and start saying, God, help me. A millionaire means many people will hate him. A millionaire means that he may not have time to rest. A wise person begins to war with prophecy. You, God tells you now you will be a millionaire. How do you behave? Buy new clothes. No, sir. That's not how to conform to prophecy. You go back and follow them who through faith and patience. Once you don't see faith and patience, don't follow them. Even if you see the promise, you must see faith and patience to qualify followership. Anybody you see the promise and you don't see faith, meaning there must be a God equation in their life. There must be something in their equation that forced them to need God. Are we blessed? 
There are many things today that God has brought this ministry into that God did not directly prophesy to me. I'm not one of those men of God that will lie to you that everything we're seeing is what God... Mm -hmm. There are things God did not tell me. I went to the word, Jesus the prophet. I looked at the truths of scripture. I understood the truths of scripture. And I saw the conditions attached to it. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I read and studied how Jesus increased in ministry. Jesus increased in ministry because he first increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. That means for anything to increase around you, something must increase within you. That's a revelation. So I don't move around with the brain of 50 members and the prayer request of 5,000 members. It doesn't work that way. I must upgrade myself spiritually, intellectually, to be able to host the kind of increase that I trust God to bring. We only know that a crowd came to Jesus, but Jesus grew. At age 12, when his mates were running around, Jesus was at the temple learning, learning. Are we together? There were a few times in scripture where we saw Jesus around feasts. There were a few times in scripture where we saw Jesus just enjoying himself. That's the portrait of a serious man of God. You, God has called you into ministry. Every movie that comes out, you must see it and watch it. It's alright if you are called into the movie ministry. But if you are called into the word ministry with power and signs and wonders, that's too much luxury. To host the anointing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. Sincerely, I, I tell you the truth as a man of God. I stand from the standpoint of the knowledge that God has given me. And I look at many people and respectfully I can tell you. There are people that results are far from them. I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But even when people stand for me to pray for them, I know that what I'm, I'm doing is not the final solution to that problem. And it is painful as a man of God. Not many people will tell you this truth. Because sometimes you see men of God who are victims of manipulating the ignorance of people. The ignorance of people can be used to the advantage of the man of God. There are times that people stand with seeds here sincerely. And I look at them and they say, Apostle, I just emptied my account and my heart is bleeding. What is this for now? You say, Apostle, I know things can turn around in my family. I know the answer is yes and no. Yes, a breakthrough can come. But sustainable financial open doors, no, sir. There are truths you must learn. So I tell the person, okay, go and get koinonia teachings there. And sometimes, as I'm talking to them, they start shaking. The moment they fall, they stand up and just laugh. You see some of them calling their loved ones, it's done. No, it's not exactly done. Honestly. You see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You must, you must, you must love God and love people to be dishonest. There are very successful people in this ministry, in business, career, and so on and so forth. Every one of them can tell you the different units, the different dimensions that construct themselves together to spell success were adhered to. Where the prophetic was needed, they opened themselves to that dimension. Where prayer was needed, they opened themselves. Where diligence was needed, they opened themselves. Like the ingredients of a, of a meal, everything was combined together to equal success. This is what I'm teaching you. Handing over the responsibility of your destiny to the prophetic alone as the ultimate determinant of your success and not staying with the word of God to understand the conditions will end you in futility and in pain. There were many things that I did not see in my life in spite of the prophetic words I kept receiving. I had to study prophecy and say, look, I have to look at this thing and examine it very carefully. And I began to find out if thou shalt diligently, Deuteronomy 28, please give it to us. 
Deuteronomy 28. If thou shalt diligently hearken. Look up please. This is prophecy. The correct approach to prophecy. And it shall come to pass. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. To what? Observe and to... Faith is not just hearing what God has said. Faith is doing what God says should be done to see that result. When the rich man came to Jesus, he said, Good master, what must I do to be saved? Apostle, the devourer is coming every time. I can't hold ten naira like this. It's as if there's a bag. Now, let me tell you this. I can stand as a man of God. Please watch this. We're going to pray shortly. I can stand as a man of God and God can show me a revelation. I can look at, for instance, come Sam, it's looking sharp and smart. Now watch this. You see how sharp and smart Sam is looking. Imagine that God opens my eyes. Now the way prophetic things are interpreted, you have to be spiritual and be grounded in the word to interpret them properly. Because God will open my eyes now. Do you know what I will see? I will see this. I will see Sam holding a basket and I will see water being poured in that basket and going down. That can be a template that God is showing me to mean that there is loss and wastage in his life. Are we together now? So he used this because God speaks in pictures. The Bible calls it similitudes. It is not only words. God speaks in pictures. So when I see that now, watch this. I can say, ah, Sam, all that I see, your finance is going down. Say, yes, it's true. Everything going down. Say, yes. You don't cover that basket just with a prophetic word. No. Remember the going down of the finances is a product of many decisions that he is taking. So the real captivity is the financial decisions. His understanding about God's methodologies as far as increase is concerned. That affects and influences the decisions he's taking. That now authorizes this opportunist called the devourer to destroy him. So to really help Sam, after prophesying to him, I'll say, Sam, I need to show you the conditions provided for by scripture to stabilize your finance. Number one, let's look at the spiritual laws you are breaking. Number two, let's look at the understanding. Let's look at what you are doing. You are not producing anything. You are not, you are not diligent. You are not exchanging anything for value. Number two, your reputation is making you to make bad decisions that are above and beyond your financial level. Now, you are closing that door permanently. Remember that knowledge and wisdom are stabilizers of destiny. When Sam goes back now, number one, he will pray and rebuke that spirit. But number two, he has now received a dimension of intelligence that teaches him that patience is godly. Are we together? That teaches him that it is all right to move small in life. If all you have is a shoe of 300 naira, it is not a mockery on your reputation. An understanding you had before called it shame. What you have now received calls it process. Because of that now, when the devourer comes as usual, a fortification has been built through knowledge. Now the prophecy of time, God is changing your life, can now happen. Because favor can now come. A system of preservation has come. This is how Sam is warring with this prophecy. Otherwise, Sam can kneel down and say, yes, sir, I will speak to him. The destiny helper will come and pour the same water into the same basket. So here's what happens in church. And I say this to churches and ministries like ours here that are apostolic and prophetic because many times we have little value for the exegesis of the word. Bringing understanding to the saints, bringing illumination because of the charismatism around the demonstration of the spirit and the prophetic. Many times we, we feel embarrassed even as, ma as men of God to settle down and mature believers through the teaching of the word. We would prefer to just begin to move. Imagine that I, I, I come here now and the power of God begins to break out. I mean, it's easy for you to see that this is that Joshua Selman. You know, the Bible said this is that. So when you bring a visitor, you say, I told you, it will reach 10 minutes when he comes up, you'll be flying. I, you doubted me. Now you see it happening. 
But sometimes when you sit down, you see the way believers are embarrassed and ashamed. When the word of God is taught you, you see that each I need something. When someone shouts, they start laughing, you know, it just, it's like it just eases up because many people do not want to grow. We have taught that prophecy is a shortcut to destiny. No, prophecy is part of the requirements. Listen very carefully. It's part of the systems that were put by the wisdom of God for the building of the saints. Prophecy was not designed to replace obedience to God's set order. If I give you a book and I say study this book on church growth, and success and leadership and administration chances are you are going to throw that book away if i say come to me and i will receive just one touch how many touches one one touch you go back your cathedral will enter another dimension that prophecy will work if you have prepared your way like dotam before you go dotam prepared his way before the lord if you have prepared your way you have done your assignment Oh, with, with Jesus' joy, that oil will come and set your life in order. Before the fire came, there was already a sacrifice, prepared already. The fire would not come, the fire cannot come and be hanging in the air and say, oh, you have quickly prepared the sacrifice. You prepare the sacrifice first. There are some of you, the prophecy on your life requires a requisite level of transformation for it to come. And since your rate of change is slow, it will take a long time. So when you say, God help me, God says, I'm, I'm ready to do it today if you will change to that dimension. What do you understand about pastoring thousands of people? What do you understand about the diplomacy of conflict management? What do you understand about leadership and administration? What do you understand about finance? What do you understand about impact and influence? What do you understand about preparing sermons? What do you understand about, about giving people an expression, growth? Just anoint me, oh God, don't worry about anything. Let me tell you what you will. You will produce a place with so many miracles that will depend on you. They will never be able to rise. This is a tragedy of the prophetic and the apostolic ministry. If I speak to you, Sam, and by tomorrow, someone gives Sam a house, a car, do you think next week Sam will come for Koinonia with speed? Sam will not even sit down there. He will sit down on the altar. Are you seeing that now? And then, the day, let's assume that this is a branch church, the day they now want to transfer me to go to the U.S., what do you think God will be telling Sam at that point? Sam will almost die that he had God. No. The emotional connect that comes by reason of the breakthrough he received through my life has made my voice look like the voice of God to him. And most often than not, God did not speak and tell him to go anywhere. He just examined the other replacement they brought. And the lazy nature of the man greeted the congregation. I said, no, I won't sit under this grace. Not at this strategic point of my life. And then he would get up and now begin to travel and go and meet me in the U.S. This guy's destiny has been wrongly attached to me. Are you seeing that now? To the point that this man can never know God by himself. Because the definition of Christianity and breakthrough as proposed by me is that if you do not receive a prophetic word from me, you are grounded, you are dead, you are finished. My name is Joshua Selman and I'm telling you it's a lie. If you take the word of God and believe it and walk within the principles that are kept in the word, I repeat to you that no divination and no enchantment. If you are reading the word properly, there are places in the word that will lead you to go and look for men to pray for you. So you don't have to be afraid of being in error. Are we together? 
I continue to watch with frustration, sincerely speaking. As prophecies continue to be aborted in the lives of people. And they blame men of God and continue to make negative prophecies to come to pass in their lives. I told you respectfully so, that in my entire paternal lineage, sincerely, I think aside from my dad, by the grace of God, I'm the most successful person. Entire, draw the line from anywhere till this. Can you imagine that kind of thing? I saw the spirit of failure and poverty and hardship in my family. You can be the greatest of anything, but live long enough, you must be the least. When I saw it, number one, I didn't deny it. I knew that the, if you deny it, that's another delay you are causing for yourself. The quicker you admitted it, the, the better for you. Just sit down and look at it and say, ah, okay, this is it. I see that there is a problem here. But I made up my mind. I, I love the word of God. I found it too. I found it. See, I have set thee above thrones, dominions, above all of these things, every name that is named. I started seeing something here. Jesus, the prophet, started speaking to my destiny. And I had the foolishness to believe him. The childlikeness to believe him. I believed him so much so that I disbelieved every other thing I saw. And then the Holy Spirit guided me enough to know what are the conditions. What does it take to actualize this? And then he began to show me step by step. And I said, it may be painful, oh God. I may not be able to go through this myself, but supply the grace. And he says, my strength is perfected in your weakness. Look what he has done today. Apostle is lucky. They I remember when they were prophesying that day. Was it not two of us? They prophesied over everybody in the meeting. That's what many people say. That's what many parents say. They look at many great men of God and say, Ah, this guy, I, he was just lucky. I knew the meeting he got born again. The same altar call was made for everybody. One person responded, another person wished. Please make up your mind. Extraordinary fruitfulness will remain a dream. Did you hear what I said? There are people who are engaging with understanding and the results are showing. Extraordinary fruitfulness is not just... It will, December will come and for many people they will find out that nothing like extraordinary fruitfulness happened. But if someone makes up his mind like Timothy... That I'm going to war a good warfare. Prophecy has been sent ahead of me. Lord, what do I need to do? Show me. Your greatest prayer in this season can be, is not just show me your ways. Lord, show me the part I have to play. Show me. What do I have to do, oh God, to change my financial story? I have desired fresh oil. I have fasted and I have prayed. What is the key? To the anointing. What is the key to a mighty supply of the spirit upon a man? I found out the key to keep the Holy Spirit close to a man. Because I knew that the nature of the ministry that God had committed to me would require a depth of intimacy. And I didn't want theory. Lord, show me. What keeps the Holy Spirit close to a man? Think of the risk that happens when he becomes far from you. And don't let nobody lie to you that he cannot be far from you. No. Huh. Spirit of the living God. I found him as the secret that he is an ever-present help in time of need. But what do I need to do as the recipient? Thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Let me tell you this. I trust God's way. One of the secrets of my life is that I trust the way of God. 
most of us have allowed education, intellect, to corrupt the potency of the ways of God. I believe God. I believe God. I remember when the Lord gave instructions here for miracle service. Foolishly and childishly did it. Everything he says to do, you do. When God declares anything here, we go after him foolishly. I remember a Jimmy said, he will tell you, when the Lord said to put some of the koinonia messages online, audio, audio message that is not very clear. People online, those of you who are social media experts know that people cannot spend two hours listening to something. They don't have that time. You break it into sections. And someone sits down for two hours, 30 minutes, listening to volumes and volumes of a message. My brothers and my sisters, it is not... Let me tell you, you, you will be shocked at the power of God that is released and the energy that prophecy carries when you align with it. Show me a man who has received a word from a prophet of God or has received a word from scripture and obtain grace from God to understand the requirements and do it. I show you a man who you're speaking against, you're cursing against, you're wishing against. It's a waste of time. My confidence today in life and in ministry is on my determination to keep doing the things that allow to host the presence of God. My confidence today is to keep doing the things that continue to bring increase in my life and in the ministry. That way you can stand and beat your chest under God and know you have entered your Sabbath. Satan can come. Challenges can come. But you are as assured of victory as you are assured of Christ sitting on his throne. My life has no fear. I sincerely mean it because I have found out. I have found how to commit God. You commit God in the affairs of your life by obtaining grace to know what to do. Jesus himself knew what to do. Buy the ingredients for jollof rice and bring somebody who does not know how to mix them. You have potential for rice. That's prophecy. But that rice will never, never be prepared there. At best, you are going to have nonsense prepared at rice. But then bring somebody who has taken out time to learn how to prepare rice and then bring the ingredients. And within a short time, as short as an hour, you will see a delicious pot or plate of rice. God is not withholding financial blessings from you. The word has come. If nobody ever spoke it to you, scripture has already told you. God is not withholding increase and influence from you. Something about your not understanding his ways may be responsible. The irresponsibility of allowing prophecy work itself, thinking it is spiritual, is very dangerous. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. But when Jesus walked upon the earth, they tried to distract him. And he said, no, 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 no. My meat is to do the will of him that has sent me. Jesus had an option to abort salvation. When he was at Gethsemane, he cried and prayed. Can you take this cup off me? But he said, nevertheless, my will, not my will, but yours be done. And when he took that cross, it was not an angel carrying it. He was carrying it, feeling the weight. The moment he wanted to throw it, he remembered. He remembered. Man will not be grafted through me to be seated. I'll, I'll, I, if I throw this now, I cannot call many sons to glory. Let me tell you this and I confess to you. There were times in my life when I would be walking through the night and sometimes I would just stop. And a joy of the Spirit will come over me. Because I saw the days coming. I knew that there were days of joy and rest. And no pain at that point sustained an ability to interrupt my focus. I knew. 
I was trying to know the Holy Spirit. Knowing the Holy Spirit is hard. Sometimes you want to sleep and He will just tell you to stroll. You will think you are going to pray for one hour and you will just return to six in the morning. It's the price. While I am doing that, someone is seen in a vision that a young man is going to arise from the north and he will carry the word and the life and the power of Jesus. That prophecy can remain in the realm of the spirit when you do not partner with prophecy. Is God speaking? What have you not done that is making prophecy to not manifest in your life? What have you done to allow a negative prophecy come to pass in your life? Something was said. You saw it in a dream. That the devil wants to oppress you. You saw it in a dream. That an attack was coming to you and your children. You just got up and, and wrote it down. Usually that's what we do. I had a dream. 3.22 a.m. In that dream. I saw knife. I saw all of that. And you didn't do anything about it. Until six months after that time. Watch this. It will not come as a physical robber. Your prayer life goes down. Your finances goes down. All helpers leave you. What was working stops working. That was the dream. Prophet is seeking expression in your life. Like Hezekiah, there's something you would have done about it. Hey, everybody in this house, turn every plate upside down. I have seen something that is an evil. And we can stay the power away. And then you get up and pray. There are many things I see that the devil wants to bring upon people, upon the ministry, upon my life. There are people who send me text messages sometimes, Apostle, this is what I've seen. Pray about the ministry. I don't sit down and cross my legs. While you are sleeping and snoring, I'm awake with God, crying and praying. Lord, worship team. Lord, prayer department. Lord, this, there must be increase. People are coming. You are opening up doors. Prophecy. And you say, I saw it too. I saw that by this time, koinonia would have increased. Yes, you saw it, but it was engaged. Is someone getting the teeth in this night? Because we are going to pray. You will never see the outstretched arm of God with the assumption that prophecy will work itself out. No. You have a dream and you see people dying in your family. That means there is a word that is bringing death. What do you do about it? You don't wait till somebody dies. Say, ah! And you know, I, I, the other day I told you, you are a witness. What kind of witness is that? You can get up and fast. Fasting is powerful, no? Oh. Hey, listen to me. Our, our Ajebo generation, fasting is important for a man's destiny. You will never be able to do business with God. If you cannot turn your plates upside down. There are times you need to sit like Elijah. You write the list of all the nonsense you saw that must change. One by one you are praying. What is this I saw about my wife? What is this I saw about my husband? What is this I saw about my business? I saw an attack. I'm sleeping. And all of a sudden I have a dream. And in that dream I see chains everywhere. In that dream I see people crying. You don't need an interpretation. The character of scripture shows you that mourning is not associated with glory. So already let the Bible interpret that for you that is trouble. You can call somebody. I pray that you will have a good friend. That when you need to change prophecy he will be available with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That you have a good friend that you say, please, can you stay awake for three hours with me today? I'm sensing the spirit of death over my family. I don't know, but I've been sensing it. And the person says, ah, you know, coincidentally, I had a dream of death. It shouldn't put fear. Your consolation is that the most sure word of prophecy has an ability to superimpose everything planned. And you can get up in the night and agree. And both of you are praying. How do you pray? You engage the truth of scripture. You don't pray and say, God, why now? Where are you? Is it, are you still there? That, that's not prayer. That's just lamentation. 
You begin to pray when you engage the truth of God's word. I choose life. I'm the head of this home. My children may be too small to choose life, but I stand as a covering. I choose life. It's a capata. When they are in school, I choose life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I've taught you this thing. Listen, if you are married in this place, young or old, you are a man. If you don't go around praying and laying hands on your children, you are not a very good ambassador of this ministry. The children should be sleeping. Don't worry, you are not a father because they serve you plate and you are sitting now. You get up and carry that regalia of priesthood. You are changing negative prophecies. Your child comes back with a result from second position to twelve. The other one from fourth to eighteen. You don't just flog them. No! Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. This is prophecy now. That delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty. This is not might. Lord, you have said my seed shall be mighty. While you are speaking that word, there are powers, let me tell you, that reside in the heavenlies. You speak and command your morning. He told Job, as thou commanded thy morning. You, are, you, are, you sleep and wake up with a dream. Someone injects you with HIV and tells you this is HIV. You get up and say, and you know, I'm feeling the spot. You get up and see marks on your body. Physical marks from a dream. And you sit down and just laugh. Laugh? No matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake. As mad as he is, he comes near fire, he will move. I'm not that mad. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. Over every challenge in my life, blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your Blow, blow, say, blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your Listen, everything you see in your dream is prophecy, seeking manifestation, good or bad. Everything you see in your dream, in your vision is a prophecy, seeking manifestation. You can allow it, you can change it, you can stop it. Inaction is a disaster to a believer. It's what you don't want that you will see happen. Can you open your mouth in one minute and just blast in the spirit? Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Please look at me. One of the demands of priesthood, get my message on priesthood, is that men become men of prayer not just prayer in terms of petition but legislators of spiritual reality anything you sit and watch will happen did you hear what i said listen there was no record of job praying for himself there was no record of any man praying for job 
the devil came through him and through his covering to afflict his family. He prayed for his children. It's true that he feared God. It's true that he ensured evil. But that's not the speech for deliverance. You must know how to pray and engage. Listen, let me tell you. Let the devil get used to you not keeping quiet when negative things come. Don't say I'm not a member of prayer band. I'm not a member of this and that. The times that we live in, let me tell you, it requires men with the spirit of Ithaca. It's a man who had an understanding of the times. Otherwise, you can confess, I shall not die. And death will sweep you like a chicken. You must have the eyes that see. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I change everything that is not consistent with the counsel of God concerning my life, my family, my finances. Please pray, pray. I change everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Every prophecy that is not of God seeking manifestation through my life, I reject you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I reject you. I speak the word, the most strong word of prophecy. I shall not die, but leave the head, not the tail, above only, not beneath. Pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. I'd like you to find someone to agree with you. Everything God said or you have seen in the spirit that is consistent with God's will and has been hunting by any power of divination within the second heavens. Lift your voice and cry. I command that it must come to pass. I wore a good warfare in the realm of the spirit. I decree and I declare the joy, the peace, the prosperity, the blessing, the anointing upon my ministry, upon my life. I declare the powers of the heavens holding everything that belongs to me. I command the release by the power of the word of God. Pray. Two minutes and we are done. You are enforcing prophecy. Hallelujah. Matthew 18, 18, please. 
place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, Him I will trust. Continue, please. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. 4. He shall cover me with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. 5. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night nor for the arrow that wasted or flyeth by day. Listen very carefully. Look at what the Bible is writing here. Next verse. Six. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Seven. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand by thy right side. It shall not come nigh thee. Eight. Only with thy eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Listen. That means every time you hear of negative things, someone is dying, they are kidnapping someone, this is happening. In as much as you sympathize with people, you don't do them at the detriment of your own conviction. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If Joshua Selman dies today, it does not mean that the truth of scripture giving life is a lie. So in as much as you sympathize with people, do it lovingly, but not at the detriment of the immutability of God's counsel. Let God be true and let every man 
be a liar. Until you rise up to possess your possession, you will never, never possess your possession. Jesus was in the wilderness praying and fasting for 40 days. Satan came to tempt him. When he defeated him, he returned in the power of the Spirit and his fame went abroad. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there are controlling powers that continue to see that negative prophecies continue to be enforced in our lives. And until the saints understand how to legislate by the Spirit, we will continue to be victims of the speakings of men. Last prayer. Father, every prophetic word that came through your word or through your servant upon my life this year, I stand in partnership. I call it Maranatha. Let that prophecy manifest in my life. Lift your voice and pray. The conditions to make it happen. I obtain grace to understand. I obtain grace to walk in keeping with it. Pray. Every prophetic word about my spiritual life, about my finances, about my marriage, about fruitfulness, I receive by the Spirit. I obtain grace. I obtain understanding. I obtain grace. I obtain understanding to know what to do, to know how to partner with prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one testimony and we'll round up tonight. A gentleman sent me a text and he said he was tired of what was happening to him and his family. You know what people call failure at the edge of breakthrough? That you see good things, but just when your hand is about to obtain it, trouble must ferment itself from wherever and come and destroy you. He said he was tired and one night he took out time that if he's to die here, he would die and he would pray. Listen to me, true story. He was praying, he said he had come here with an oil that I prayed for and then, you know, he went back and applied that oil and he was praying and praying and praying and then it looked like he fell into a trance. And according to him, he said, I walked to him and I told him to lift two of his hands. And when he lifted his hands, I started removing what looked like maggots out from his hands. Like that. Remove or, uh, maybe a number of them. When the gentleman said that happened, by the next day, he got a job. Next day, he got a job. See, I've told you time does not change anything. You must engage with prophecy. You must engage with prophecy. Don't wait until miracle service when you write your prayer request and bring it here. Go and write it now. And trust God for grace. One hour in the night will not stop your sleep. We spend three hours worrying. Wake up in the night. Every man in Koinonia is an intercessor. Let me tell you, if you're a married man in this place and you're not an intercessor, you are not a good ambassador. Learn it. Wake up and pray. Put that request on the ground. Place your hand on it. Pray. It will look like nothing is happening. Don't mind what you are seeing. You just pray. Forever, O oh Lord. Thy word is settled. Let me tell you what will happen when you pray. Satan will use the sense realm to send images that negate what you are trying to do because he knows that to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. 
You can even finish that prayer and go back to bed and have a dream that is another negative connotation. And you stand up and say, but I just wasted my time. So these three days prayer and fasting is nothing. If it was not bringing an effect to hell, the devil will not send you that kind of dream. The key is to remain. Let me tell you this. There are certain prayers that you don't pray for one day. Let me be sincere with you. And I don't mean to insult anybody, but that understanding that when you pray once, it's done. Well, I may not have enough experience to challenge that, but I can tell you the one I know. That when you stay on an issue, huh, and you pray and cry, Jesus prayed, he came out, saw the disciples, went back and prayed the same words, the same way, three times, Jesus prayed. Bible said, looking up to Jesus, not up to any prophet or any man of God. Don't pray once and sit down. How long do I pray until you see the feast manifest in the earth realm? You pray on when you see the, the cloud manifest in the earth realm. It gives you a sign, then you know that those realities have reached. Otherwise, please pray. If it takes 21 days, pray. The grace for the, the spirit of gluttony that will not allow you to fast and pray. I curse it now in the name of Jesus. It's a different thing if you have a health issue that may not allow you to pray. There are many of us, the last time you fasted was during um, fasting and prayer. That's not healthy for your spiritual life. Please don't say it does not matter. Everybody, know, we know where we are coming from. By God's grace, our children will not go through this. But in between where you are coming from and where you are going, you must stand as a bridge and flog this thing out once and for all. Reject spiritual laziness. Stay with the word. Please listen to me. Let me advise you. I say this not to everybody. At least I have a responsibility over you. Please obtain grace from God to sit down in one place. This spirit of running up and down from here, visiting this, running and down. I can't do that spirit in this season in Jesus' name. You must obtain grace. Don't sit in your room gisting, gossiping, talking. Open your Bible and sit down for God's sake. And study. More than listening to a message. Carry your Bible. Carry your notebook and sit down. Read something. Spirit of the living God, open my eyes and sit down and read. There were times when any house you go to, you see people, even if they are gisting, their Bible is in front of them. But right now, is this, these are phones everywhere. You sit down, you are watching film, you are watching this. I'm not saying it's wrong, but life has seasons for God's sake. A farmer who is sleeping during rainy season, will be foolish to go to the farm during harvest. The earth still works on seed time and harvest. You are a man of God here. Reduce your physical exposure and stay in the secret place and pray. Don't move around and I'm pastor this, I'm a prophet this, I'm a pastor this. Sit down in one place with the word. Be sound in scripture. Be mighty in power. Most of what you need for your destiny is internal. Sit down. Don't become a busybody roaming here and there. You know, in the afternoon, you are there in the hot sun. You are moving around. You visit this one. I'm not saying visitation is wrong. But you are at a critical point of your destiny. Receive grace to sit down. Study. When you fall asleep and you stand up, and you didn't read your Bible, you didn't pray, don't act like nothing happened. Don't forgive yourself for nothing. No! You stand up. Any time is right for prayer. If you plan to pray in the morning and evening, that's my recommendation for you. I've told you. The morning times and the evening times are powerful times. So said the ministry of Jesus. There are few times Jesus prayed in the afternoon. I'm not saying prayer in the afternoon is wrong. But the activities of life will not give you the kind of focus. Wake up in the morning and pray. Wake up in the night and pray. Some of you as you go back now, don't say it's too late and it's too cold. Receive grace from God. Stretch a little and pray. And don't just pray anyhow. Pray strategically. Pray scriptures. 
obtain grace from God. There's no light you switch on your candle. You switch on your phone. Instead of just watching a movie and then you, 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 watch, you watch spirit to enter your destiny. There is a price for this thing, let me tell you. God is not a magician. There is a real price. Either you want it or you don't. But if you want it, you mean business. And be aware of distractors. Are we together? There are people who are sincere people. But somehow it looks like because of their weakness, they allow the devil. Just when you want to pray, they just come and knock your house. Have the courage to tell people, please, I would appreciate it if you want to come and see me. I truly would appreciate that you just let me know. I may be studying. Or you can come anytime, but please don't be offended if you come and find me studying. Somebody should not buy a DVD and come to your house to watch and say he's all spoiled. Is that a blessing? What if he comes to meet you doing something? Please take your life seriously. This is about destiny. Make up your mind that this prophetic word must come to pass. Especially this issue of finances. Go and get... There are too many messages that have been preached around the area of finances. Get it and sit with it. Don't just say, lay hands on me. Thank God for seed. Thank God for the prophetic But Sit down. I'm a young man. What does it take to be established? Lord, will I end up in this one room forever? The answer is yes, until you change it. You sit down. What do I need to know? Are we together? Father, we thank you. We bless you for tonight. You have shown to us that without engaging prophecy it will fail. And you have shown to us that negative prophecies can be changed. Lord, bring us together as a family of faith and as a body of believers to a point where we exalt the truth of your word. We exalt the immutability of your counsel more than any opinion. We choose the word of God as a sure word, a more sure word of prophecy. We choose the word of God as final authority in all matters over our lives. We stake our lives at your word. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for your precious people. Every condition that needs to be engaged to actualize every prophetic word that is upon their lives. I pray that both the grace and the understanding be revealed to them. In the name of Jesus. That you will act out in faith. And that in the name of Jesus, the Lord will honor you. And the Lord will cause your life to be an unending testimony of wonders. Do this, O oh God, and be glorified. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let me make an altar call last week. Because of time, I couldn't make an altar call. A gentleman sent me a text and said, Apostle, I was waiting for an altar call. I really wanted to give my life to Jesus. It broke me so bad. I asked the Lord for forgiveness. And so, no matter what it is, we will have to make an altar call. Please keep standing. We are already rounding up. Please keep standing. Let's honor those who will be coming. There are people inside. There are people outside who are saying, Apostle, I desire to hand my life over completely to Jesus. Or I desire to rededicate my life. If there's anyone like that, you're inside, you're outside, you're saying, I need Jesus, time is gone, but I need Jesus. Please make your way to the front very quickly. Don't be ashamed, don't wait for anybody to come. Whether you're outside, make your way inside. God bless you.